Hi, this is Herb Shapiro with the Dr. Vax channel. And a, a couple days ago, I did a video about printing, 3D printing flowers. Here's some examples of the flowers I talked about in that video. And as part of that video, I discussed the idea of supports, specifically using supports in Cura version 4.4. Based on the comments of my viewers, this is an interesting topic for a lot of people. So today, I'm going to cover supports in Cura version 4.4 in a lot more detail. Stay tuned and let's learn something together. First, as I described in the prior video, 3D printers are very, very good at printing vertical surfaces. They draw a line, they print a line, they go up a little bit, they print another line, and the layer below supports the layers on top. 3D printers have a lot of trouble with horizontal surfaces because gravity is trying to pull them down, causing them to droop. As an example, if we look at this print, we'll see on this horizontal surface where there's no support underneath, the filament actually hangs off the bottom. It disconnected from the surface. It drooped down. This is a failed print. So if you need to print a horizontal surface, what do you need to do? Well, you need to add some type of support to hold it up. You can put columns in yourself or your slicer can do it for you. But you don't need to support all non-vertical surfaces, only surfaces that are a certain degree off of the vertical. So if this is a vertical surface, that's no problem. This might be 10 degrees, no problem. 20 degrees, no problem. When you get to about 50 or 60 degrees from the vertical down to the surface, you need to add supports. So today we're going to look at those supports. This is a model with an example of supports that were added by Cura. So this particular surface was greater than 50 degrees, that's the default in Cura, from the vertical, so it added these supports. These supports snap out, and depending on a number of parameters, they're either easier or harder to remove from the object. In this particular case, you'll see I'm using a needle nose pliers, and they're relatively hard to remove, but where they're removed, the surface is pretty smooth, is relatively smooth. The reason is these particular source supports, here we go, these particular supports used a feature called an interface. So this surface is really quite nice on this model. Now, if I look at the same angle on another model where there are no supports, you'll see there's drooping all over that edge. Here, the model with support using an interface layer is very smooth. So now let's take a look and look inside Cura and learn a bit more about how you specify supports and what some of the key parameters are. Now, we're not going to cover them all. There are, I don't know, 15 or 20 different things you can vary with supports. And 3D printing, as I've said before, is not just engineering. It's also a bit of art. So getting a perfect 3D print is a matter of fine tuning your slicer, including supports. If you're only printing one of an object, that may seem burdensome. It may seem that you have to do two or three prints to get it right. If you're using this for production, you're printing 100, once you get it tuned in, it's going to print the same every time. Okay, now let's take a look at Cura. Okay, I'm using Cura 4.4. We're going to click on the file folder we're going to open a model, and that model you see will come into our screen. Now, the first thing we can do is if we look at the bottom, we'll see the red surfaces that I've described in other videos. Those are areas that require support or they must be on the print bed. So in essence, this bottom surface of this print has to either be supported or on the print bed. Why? It's horizontal. So we're going to rotate this back and now 
let's click on the menu bar here and we're going to look at supports and we'll see here it's unchecked so if i click slice click on the menu bar to make that go away we'll see that this print would print in one hour and seven minutes and if we look at the preview there are no supports we're just seeing our print now i'm going to go back to prepare click on our menu and toggle supports on click slice toggle our menu off and when this is done we'll take a look at the model in preview mode and now there are supports everywhere everywhere where the angle from the vertical going down is greater than the parameter set in Cura and the default is 50 degrees. But there's a problem with that. And that is that on this model, this overhang, which is 90 degrees, it goes all the way down, um, isn't drooping at all. Why? It's supported by part of the model. And you can bridge a surface of about 50, 60 millimeters, maybe a little more depending on your filament, your temperature and your printer, successfully because the supports are built in. So how do we tell Kira not to add supports here? Because supports have to be taken out and you could see from before, it's not always easy. So we're going to rotate this model around a little bit, go back to prepare, and now click on the model, click on this icon down here called support blocker, and then click on the model again. You have to click on the model, not on an open space. And you'll see it added a block there. Well, that block is a new model. And I can move that wherever I want. But it's a new model that has been flagged as a support blocker. So we're going to go to scale. And I can make that a little bit bigger. And I can click on uniform scaling. And then scale it in both directions at the same time. That's actually make this uniform so we'll make it 180 by one whoops by 180 by 180 okay now we're going to click on move and where do we want to put it well we want to put it down here so let's rotate our model around so we can see that and then we're going to move this cube this gray cube so it covers that part of our model. We'll rotate around again to get it in the right position. And it's got to go down a little bit. There we go. Now just to play it safe, I'm going to go to scale and I'm going to make it a little bit bigger to make sure it's covering that whole feature. So now we can see that we have a support blocker covering that feature. Let's click slice again. And preview. And now there are no supports on this overhang. So it's the first feature you should learn about in Cura. And I believe this is added in 3.3 or 3.4, so it's been there a while, but it gets better each release. Now let's look at some of the other parameters, because if we look at this model, this has supports, but it looks completely different than this model. First, I wanna point out that these on the bottom are called brims. I like to use brims with supports, it's an optional feature, because it ensures that they stick to the surface of the print bed properly. In this particular model, I did not have a brim, and you can see some of the supports actually fell off while it was printing, and that caused this feature to not print properly. So let's go here to supports and let's look at the various features. Well, the first thing you'll notice is there's a support right here. Well, if I say only add supports where it's touching the build plate, and I reprocess now, you'll see that the support here has been removed. Now there's still a support on the outside edge because this 
particular bar is obviously not exactly over this bar. Okay, now that we've covered supports everywhere and supports touching the print surface, another thing you should know is that when you prepare your model, the orientation of your model will impact. So if we rotate this around, let's rotate it this way actually. If we rotate this around and then we slice the model, the way it's going to position supports may be slightly different. Um, because it uh, varies the supports based on the orientation of the model. Okay, now let's go back to supports here. And let's say that instead of adding supports if the angle is over 50 degrees, we only want to add supports if the angle is over 70 degrees. So see we have a support here. Well, I think that's probably about a 60 degree angle. So we're gonna change this to 70 and slice and see what impact that has. And now you'll see there are no supports here because we specified to Cura to only generate supports if it's over 70 degrees. Yes, this one here was printed without supports and this is not terrible. It's not great, but it's not terrible. So we might be able to get away without supports there. Let's look at some of the other parameters. There are different types of supports. If we switch it to lines and we slice, you'll see here that it's only putting single lines in some places of the model. Also over here, you'll see that there are single lines instead of the zigzag that we have on this model. Now, this was printed with single lines, but I also specified a very low support density, meaning don't put a lot of supports. And while it seemed to work okay here, on this feature here, it's drooping underneath because there weren't enough supports. So you can vary the support style and the support density. Let's look at that. Support density is this next parameter here. Now, why would you want a lower support density? Because it's easier to remove supports. These supports here are very, very easy to remove. You'll see they come right off. Whereas these supports here are much more difficult to remove from the model. So you want the density to be high enough to support the model so it prints nicely, but not so high that it's difficult to get the supports off. But there are other parameters that you can vary to make it harder or easier to get the supports off. And one of those parameters is the support Z distance. This parameter here is how much space to leave between the structure being supported and the actual supports. You don't want them actually touching because they'll fuse together. So the, the default is a tenth of a millimeter. Now, depending on your printer, it may not even be able to print a tenth of a millimeter accurately. So you could try making that a little larger than that. I surely wouldn't make it smaller. Now, what else can you do to ensure that when you remove your supports, as an example, let's see which one here. I believe, yeah, this one here. This was printed with a feature to make removing the supports easier. And that feature is called Enable Support Interface. What that will do is it will print an actual layer, a flat layer on top of the supports, then leave that air gap then have your feature. Okay, now in this case, that feature was turned on. So let's zoom in here. And you'll notice this blue line right here. That's the interface. So that's sitting on top of the supports between the support structure and the model. And this was printed with an interface. So you can actually see here, I can pull it apart. Um, and when I snap this support off, this surface is really nice and clean. So I'm a big fan of using interfaces. 
If your gap is not large enough though, your Z gap, and if you print too hot, um, you will, could potentially get a fused model. There are many, many more uh, features that you can use that impact the size of features on your model where you add supports and others. Uh, really too much to cover today, but I encourage you to take and position your mouse over any of these features and then read the descriptions. Now there's one more feature I wanna cover that I think you'll find interesting, and that's an experimental feature. And the experimental feature is called tree support. Now, I haven't had good luck with this. What this does is instead of using straight supports underneath, it creates something that looks like a tree with branches. Theoretically, it uses less filament. It does take longer to slice, but I actually haven't found uh, that it's very effective. And for the examples I've looked at, it actually takes longer to print with tree support. So let's slice this now. And if you remember, this model printed in about a, uh, an hour and seven, eight minutes when we printed it without any support. With tree support, it claims, and you can see what these look like here, it claims it'll take two hours and six minutes. So depending on your model, that may or may not be a good feature. So let's review very quickly. Under the support settings, some of the features that you want to look at are support placements, whether it's touching the build plate or everywhere, the support overhead angle, the support Z distance is the gap between the top of the support and your model, the support density, that's really how many supports to add, and then whether to use a support interface. That's that flat support on top of the support beams, so to speak. Now, let's look at a model with supports again and talk about how you remove supports. Well, there are a couple standard tools. Uh, a needle nose pliers is a great tool to use. A X-Acto knife is another good tool. But depending on the supports, in this case, once again, I had an interface, so it's really nice and smooth here. That's why I like using interfaces. There are cases where you remove supports and it won't be very smooth, or you have a model that's not very smooth. So how can you smooth it out? Well, one thing you can do is you can just use sandpaper. And you can sand your model to smooth out that area. Now, if you have a model like this one where it's drooping, that's really too defective. But if it's just a slight droop, you might be able to smooth it out with sandpaper. Now, if you don't like sanding by hand, this is a Dremel tool. You can put a sanding disc on a Dremel tool. You can use that. Now, I caution you is you, if you use a rotary tool, keep the speed very low. Because if you go too high, then you're actually going to melt the plastic. You're going to get too much friction. So we can go and we can take and smooth this out a little bit here. Now, there's a problem with all of these techniques. And the problem is, and you probably won't be able to see it here, but this plastic is nice and shiny. When I sand it, it becomes dull. It's not shiny anymore. So if you're going to paint your model, sanding your model off with a power tool or by hand is fine. But if you're not gonna paint your model, how do you either remove those defects and or get it shiny again? Well, you use a wood burner. This is a wood burner or an electric knife this happens to be the Creative Versa tool. I like this kit a lot for two reasons. One, it has a number of different blades for the end. It's sold as a hot knife or for wood burning using leather or wood, and you can control the temperature. If you set this too high, I have this in the top of the yellow temperature setting, then you're actually going to melt your plastic too fast and burn it. But if you set it low enough, you can take a surface that you've um, sanded down and you can in essence iron it very gently. It's smoothing that layer down and returning the shiny surface. So I hope you learned something. If you did, give me a thumbs up, continue to watch the videos, recommend them to your friends, leave comments, 
so we can learn together. We can interact about things that work, things that don't work for you. Thanks so much. And most importantly, let's continue to learn together.